So you have then educated a public deliberately over years, over decades, to believe that black men in particular and black people in general are criminals. I want to be clear because I'm not just saying that white people believe this, right? Black people also believe this and are terrified of our own selves. For me, what's more disturbing is the degree to which black people bought into that. The difference now is somebody can hold up one of these, get what's going on, they can put it on YouTube, and the whole world has to deal with it. I don't have any choice where this is, and if you're giving me the choice, I say no, because I don't want this everywhere, and I don't have a choice. And I could have used it, it's public domain. One of them's public domain. Many people own the footage. If you're the bystander that took it, it's yours. Some people have sold it to news organizations. We expected 800 to 1,000. To even see 800 plus people there, it was mind boggling, because I was just like, we did this? More than 50 and 60 and 70 people came. To hear that 65K came is, it's amazing. The initiative that I started to combat the cause that I was supporting was started on Instagram, where we shared stories of African youth. And then it culminated into a website that then expanded to videographic and photographic content and campaigns, promotions of seminars, programs, and workshops. But it all started on my phone. Since then, I've been invited to speak at Google and Facebook in Dublin, Ireland. I've been in invited to the prestigious Howard University in Washington, DC, because of something that started on my phone and even most recently invited to an intimate roundtable discussion with former First Lady Michelle Obama, all because of something that started on my phone. Well, there's no question social media is a powerful platform. Just as quickly as it can spread misinformation, it can unite people around a common cause. Seeing is believing. And seeing those videos of George Floyd's arrest and his death spread across Twitter and Instagram, and a movement was born. The hashtag Black Lives Matter gained momentum and went global. On May 28th, just three days after George Floyd died in police custody, the hashtag Black Lives Matter had been shared on Twitter a record 8.8 .8 million times. Does your Instagram feed look like this? That was not the intention. If you do that, you are actually helping to raise the voices of black people instead of completely squashing the conversation. If we all get on our Instagram and everything is black, we're not talking about the things that matter. And if you do decide to put up a black picture as a post, do not use the hashtag Black Lives Matter because what it does is when you click on the hashtag, everything in there is black. So suddenly all of the content, all of the art, all of the education, all of the announcements of protests and events all of those are suddenly buried. In recent years, we've seen an increase in the visibility of student activists with the rise of social media. Engaging in political activity only on social media, though, is often known as slacktivism. A hashtag is not helping. Hashtag yes all women, hashtag take back the night, hashtag not all men, hashtag stop pretending hashtags are the same as doing something. Hashtags are very pretty on Twitter, but a hashtag is not a movement. A hashtag does not make you Dr. King. A hashtag does not change anything. It's a hashtag. It's you sitting on your butt, typing in your computer, and then going back to binge watching your favorite show. Social media activism, which I like to call slacktivism, is useless if it doesn't create awareness that leads to action off the internet.